Oh. All right, here we go. There's a camera in there with a bike. Okay, so let me see. So, quick recap list all the factors of 40. We did it. If, they ask, if I ask you this question, one thing that would make it easier is if I knew ahead of time how many I'm supposed to end up with. So here's something cool. Let, let's look at a, let's look at 40. Let's do a prime factor tree of 40. You guys remember prime factor trees? So it doesn't even match. So here's what I love about this. Let me see if you guys are gonna understand. Can somebody give me one way to factor 40? Just to put underneath there? 10 and 4. 10 and 4. Did anybody else consider a different way? 8 and 5. 8 and 5, okay. So let's do 10 and 4, and let's do 8 and 5, right? Yep. How do I continue here? 5 and 2. Yeah, 5 times 2. 2 times 2. 2 times 2. So this would be 2 to the 3rd times 5, right? Mm -hmm. What about over there? 2 times 4, 2 times 2, 2 to the third times 5, right? I mean, so on one level, it shouldn't be surprising because I, I call prime factorization, I call it finding the DNA of a number. Because if you put 3, 2s, and 5 together, you can only get 40, right? So if I put your DNA together, I can only get you, right? Let me put the, yeah, okay, okay. So I don't know, I don't know if I'm the only one here, but I call it the DNA because I like it. It makes sense to me. Um, now watch it. This is so cool. Um, notice, let me see if I can piece this together for you. Um, notice when I had 10 times 4, 5 times 8, isn't that like multiplicative compensation? Yeah. If you steal a factor of 2 from 10 and put it on the 4, you get a whole different set of numbers now, right? What if I steal a, a factor of 4 from 8 and put it on the 5? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, so here's the idea. To make the list, if I have this, to make the list, I could do something like this. I can use no twos and no fives, Jeff. We call that zero, two, zero, fives, right? Because one factor of 40 is certainly one, yes? Remember what's two to the zero? One. one. So isn't that one times one? And isn't that a factor of 40? Mm -hmm. So I can put these together any way possible and I'll get the complete list, right? If I kept going, couldn't I use one, two, and no five? That would be a two, yes? Mm -hmm. Couldn't I use two twos and no five? Three twos and no fives. What about uh, no twos and one five? No twos and two fives. No, I can't use two fives, can I? I think I'm done. Am I done? Or am I missing something? I am missing something. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I've missed. Oh yeah. Uh, this is all zero, zero. I'm not doing this in the best way. Two squared times one five. And so I mean, I could just. Do you guys kind of get the? I could just recollect all the factors by. I could put one two and one five, or two twos and one five, or two twos no fives. I just recombine them whatever way I want to to get a piece of the number. Does that make any sense to you? So, um, how many options do I have for the two spot? Don't I have three options? Yeah. Or I'm sorry, four options, four. right? And how many options do I have for the five spot? Two, two right? Mm -hmm. So what was the power on the two? Three. three. But I had how many options? Four. four. What's the power on the five? How many options, though? Two. Two. So if I have four options, let me see if you guys are fooling. Stay with me, stay with me. To make the first piece, could I use two to, the, two to the zero, or two to the first, or two to the second, or two to the third, right? Yeah. To make the second place, I could use five to the zero or five to the one, all the way down, right? Yeah. Isn't that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is exactly how many factors we found? So what's the shortcut to this shift? Prime factor the number, and then add one to this, add one to this, and multiply those. That'll tell you how many factors there would be. So let's try that 20, what was it, 2460, right? 2460. Help me out. 
Now the quick way to do this is it's even. Yeah, so two times one, two, three, zero, right? And that's still even. Two times 615. Now what goes into 615? Five times. One, oh, no, one. 123. Is that 123? Okay. And now, 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 let's see. 123. What goes into 123? Three. Three, because they all add up to be six, which is a multiple of three. Three goes into 123. 41. 41. You got to put the three, two, Jeff. There you go, buddy. And 41, what do you guys think about 41? Let's see, I got two squared, right? Two squared times five to the first, times three to the first, times 41 to the first. Question. Stay with me, stay with me, I love you guys. So right now, I don't care what the factors are, I just wanna know how many there would be. So look at the powers. One more than this is three. One more than this is two, one more than this is two, one more than this is two, three times two times two times two is? You guys see that? One more, one more, one more, one more, and then just multiply, because that's all the options you have for each spot. That would be all the branches you could make. Three times eight is 24. So if you did make the complete list of all the factors of 2460, you should end up with 24 in your list, 24 numbers. Did you? Did you? Okay, I can take that. Okay. Now, <laughs> moving on. Hopefully, you guys can. It's kind of a neat idea. It's one of those things that you don't see very often. Sorry, I missed. How did you make the 24 again? What is the three oh, the other two three? each power increase it by one because the two could be zero, one, or second power. So that's why it's always one more option than what's here. Okay. That goes to two, that goes to two, that goes to two, and then you just multiply those. Because that would be like the branching. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you guys see how this tree, it represents multiplication? Yeah. Four options times two options is eight total options. So this would just be uh, branch and then branches and then branches and branches. I wouldn't want to draw it, but it starts to look like capillaries and stuff. Right? Okay, so that's one idea is just how to know ahead of time how long your list would be. Right? Okay. Um, we also did the prime factorization tree, which is nice. So we got that out the way. Let me just throw this at you, see what you remember. How would you find a GCF of uh, 12 and uh, 40, let's say? What does GCF mean? Greatest common factor. So let's put that more into real simple English, right? The biggest number that goes into both. That's the greatest common factor. Cool? Yeah. So how could you figure that out for these two numbers? You guys remember doing this kind of thing? Or? Yeah. A little bit? So does anyone have a method that you remember or anything you can think of right now to figure out? Well, let's see. What kind of makes sense is, wouldn't one thing that makes sense is to list all the freaking factors and just see What's the biggest one they have in common? Yeah, that one's called the set, no, Jeff. <laughs> the set intersection, I think vowels are overused. Set intersection method. So 40 we did earlier, right? What about 12, 12 is nice.
squared 12 is like three. That was the turnaround point. You start pairing. Sweet. That little square thing is really cool. So what's the biggest number that's in both sets? One. Yeah. Now, can you imagine a situation where that method would suck? Big numbers. Yeah, big freaking number 24 freaking what if that was your oh, shit, mm -hmm. right? Do you, does anyone agree with me that getting the prime factors is a lot easier than listing all the factors of this? Yeah. You guys agree with me? So maybe we can develop a better method based on this shit right here. Right? So let's look at, all right, so here's a second method. And this is just called the prime factor method. So the same question. So the GCF, the 12 and the 20. Break 12 up. Four and three, so three times two squared is equal. And then 40 is eight times five, so we, and we already did it a second ago. Five times two cubed, is that cool? Mm -hmm. Do they share a three? Mm. No, do they share a five? Mm. No, do they share a certain number of twos? Yes. How many twos do they share? Two, two squared. Freaking four, bam! Yes? Is that? That's the method I always like to show students. I kind of, I really want you to see how that makes, if I prime factor it, and the whole point is, the biggest thing that goes into both, you can just look at the parts. If they don't share a three, they can't be part of the answer. Don't share a five, it can't be part of the answer. Oh, they both have some twos. They both have two twos. Done. Yeah? So here, um, let's see, do, yeah, do the GCF of 28 and 36. Do it both ways, both ways. Store. Right. So 28, what you got for 28? One, two, four, eight, seven, eight, 14, 28. Okay. Square 20 is about five. So four was the turning point. And then 36. One, two, three, four, six, six, 
Now, what's, look, what's the square root of 3, 6? So 6 is exactly the midpoint, and now you turn the corner. 6 goes with itself, which is interesting. And now you go. So, of course, what's the biggest one they put past? Four. Four, you. Yeah. And again, I'm giving you relatively small numbers. So, the set intersection method is right now okay. Then I make these suckers any bigger because I'm going to screw this guy. So, what's the other method going to look like? Prime factor PF chain. I mean, PF method. Prime factor. <laughs> Let's see. Thank you for laughing. Yeah, you know, four times seven, so two squared times seven is that cool? Mm -hmm. And this is four times nine, so it'd be two squared times three squared. So you can eliminate which numbers immediately. Seven and three. They're not going to be involved. But you can see they definitely. I mean, that's just in your face. <laughs> Bam! Right. So that's a lot quicker. Well, not, not in this case, but it's, it'll be generally that's the quicker way. Something, so here's the big thing. I want you to realize this. If 4 goes into two different numbers, this is almost going to be stupid to say, but aren't they both multiples of 4 then? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't they then, stay with me now, wouldn't they then have to be a multiple of four apart from each other? We did this before. Start counting by fours. Count by multiples for four. Eight. If I pick any of these and I subtract them, aren't they going to be a multiple of four apart? Because they're freaking a list of multiples of four, right? How far apart are those numbers? Now, does 28 go into both of them? No. no. But but look, how far apart are uh, 4 and 20? 16. But does 16 go into 4 and 20? No. So, so here's the thing. When you take the difference between two numbers, any factor of what you get could possibly be a, a, a factor of each of them. Because of the fact that multiples have to stack up like that, I really want this because this is so cool. <laughs> so the only possible answers to the GCF of this would be four and seven, or two, right? Yeah, two, four, and seven. That, and of course maybe it's one because maybe that's the only thing they have in common. I guess. Semi with me a little bit, not really. Screw you, Jeff. So for example, um, let me see. What if I had to do the GCF of 13 and 41? How far apart are 13 and 41? 28. So the only possible things are 1, 2, 4, 7, or 28, right? Yeah. Is any of those going to work? Just which one's the only one that's going to work here? One. One. So it's still now, now okay. I'm, trust me, I'm going somewhere with this. So. One thing you can do, let's do it on this nice one, and I'm going to throw you a really ugly one, because uh, that's what I do. Um, the GCF of 12 and 40 equals the GCF of 12 and 40 minus 12. Let's see if this works. It's, it's kind of like based on that idea that if it's going to work, they have, it's all about how far apart they are. Let's see, what is this? This is GCF of 12 and 28. I can do it again. GCF of 12 and 16. And now you can pretty much tell it's four, right? Yeah. But I can keep going. I can have a GCF of 12 and 16 minus 12 is four. And I can keep going. I can do GCF of 12 minus 4 is 8 and 4. And I can keep going. 8 minus 4 is 4. And the freaking GCF of a number in itself is that stupid number, right? Yeah. So, is there a shortcut? So, I really want this to make sense. It's all about 
the distance between them because the only way the GCF has to represent a multiple that goes into both. So they have to be a multiple of that number apart. So this is capturing that idea. How far apart are the stupid things? Let's take it down to size. So um, let me see. If we did this one. This one's not too bad. This is oh, oh, let me show you a shortcut. Yeah, get out of here. You're just dumb. You're stupid. We'll get a bigger one in there, man. But here's a shortcut to this. What am I doing that really <laughs> what do I keep doing? What do I keep repeating? It's repeated what? Subtraction. Holy shit. So what's an obvious shortcut? Division. Division. So 12 goes into 40 how many times? Three. Three. With what left over? Yeah. Do you see how after one, two, three subtractions, weren't we left with the four? So I can say that this equals 12 comma four. Now four goes into 12 three times with no remainder. And that pretty much tells me that four is the answer, right? It would be zero and four, and what goes into both of those would be four. So when you get a remainder of zero, you're basically done. So maybe it's really nice, and it's all about just multiples being some distance apart, and that's why subtracting makes sense. It's capturing that distance apart that those are. So let's try um, stupid big number. Uh, Dooby dooby doo. Where are you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So let's do the GCF of. Where did it go? Fourteen seventeen. No, yeah. And twenty six. Do you want to do set intersection method? Do you want to do prime factor tree? Oh, thank you. So, what am I going to divide here? Because I would do multiple subtractions of 26, right? So I want to divide 1417 by 26 to see how many 26s I would subtract. And the remainder would tell me, if I did all those damn subtractions, what would be left at the end? So it sort of like skips all those subtractions. Division is a quick way to subtract the same thing multiple times. We know that, it's repeated subtraction. Just like multiplication is repeated addition. So 26 into 1417. Uh, 54.5. Ah, come on, what did you do with long division? Oh. Cube goes into 14 about five times. Five, all right, I'm just kind of cheating a little bit. Five times twenty six, one thirty, one seventeen. Five is one thirty, so four will probably be good. Four times twenty six is one hundred four. Is that right? So what that means is, if I did subtract twenty six until I got this number down small enough. I would end up with 13. I would subtract 26 54 freaking times. So this is equivalent to this. And that one you can tell on site what the shit it is, right? What's the GCF of 13 and 26? Freaking 13, right? So that's GCF. Probably methods you've never seen before. But you know, I know you knew what GCF kind of was when you came in. So what about the other three letters? Does anyone remember the other three letter dude that sort of? LCM. Yes. Which of course leads to LCD. LCM, we call it LCD if they happen to be bottoms of fractions. What do those letters stand for? Least, least, 
common multiple. I love it. So the smallest number that both things multiply up to be. So if I wanted to do the LCM of, do you have an example, Jeff? Yeah. Oh, that's boring. It doesn't matter. You can do it. I'll do this again. The LCM of 2836. Now this is going to kind of suck a little bit, the first method. The first method is set intersection again. Except now, this isn't about pieces of the numbers. This is about the numbers multiplying up. So if I want to do the set intersection method, the sets that I create are the multiples of each of those. So like for 28, it would be 28 times 2 is 56. I can just keep adding 28. Add 28, 84. Add 28, I don't know, 112. Add 28, 140. You guys all trust me? I don't know. Add 28, 168. Now, now at the same time, you could be doing 36, right? Because I don't know how far I've got to go. Let's see, yeah, I'll get things look good. So 36, 72. 108, 144, right? Is everybody cool with how I'm getting those numbers? Yeah. Just adding 36. Uh, 180, 216, 2. What is that? 52. Thank you. If I keep going here, to see, I don't see anything matching yet, right? Right, yeah. Add 28, 196. Add 28, 224. Add 28. Yeah. Oh, thank the God. So that method sucks is the point I think I'm getting across pretty well. So we hope there's a method that's better than that shit. Right? Sure enough there is. So this is also how I teach people to do lowest common denominators. Because that's what LCM really is. Um, mostly used for them. And it's going to be, of course, based on the prime factorization tree again. Right? So let's see. Prime factor these guys for like the eighth time today. I can't use you, Blue. I'm sorry. Um, this will be 2 squared times 7, and this will be 2 squared times 3 squared. We've mapped the genome of those two numbers. Now watch this, this is kind of cool. I think of this as, does anyone out there have any, does anyone out there, oh, you guys are really young. Anybody have any kids or anything? Anybody ever been a kid? <laughs> so, you remember uh, like getting a bowl of ice cream and your brother, anybody had brothers or sisters? Yeah. We're still doing, okay. You got bowls of ice cream, right? And then you get your bowl of ice cream and you look over, hey, it's sprinkles. <laughs> Well, sprinkles, you know, so he gives them sprinkles. And like, and this guy's like, hey, you got more ice cream than I did. Uh, you gotta get more ice cream. Okay, there's a point to the story, by the way. Um, the idea here is, here's the bowls of ice cream. What do they both share already? Just straight up, two, two squared. So, so, what is this bowl missing that that bowl has? What is this bowl missing that that bowl has? Three squared. So if I give this bowl three squared, what is this bowl missing now that this bowl has? So the LCM is that. That's what you have to give both of them to make them the same. This is the bowls of ice cream. It's probably better I don't have kids because at some point I'll just eat all the freaking ice cream and say, there, there you go. go. Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't care. I'm happy. We'll take a nap after eating all that ice cream. So what is that? Holy shit! Bam! Son of a bitch. I'm in. Okay. Is that? No? Maybe? No? Another example? Better than the first one. But yeah, yeah. Saturday section method sucks, but... It's a good place to start with small numbers because it, it, it's directly the idea. 
right? It's directly the idea. What's the smallest number they both multiply up to be? Well, let's make a list of what each one does and see what's the one they agree on. But then you quickly start to say, oh, it's getting harder now. Let's talk about a different way to do it, right? Um, uh, did anyone come up with another? I can do it on the fly. I'll do it live. Um, what about the LCM of? Uh, let's do 40 and 75. I like it. Screw the centers. Let's just do it the, the better way. Right? So 40's come up a few times today. Oh. I don't know if I'm seeing this part of the board. What's that? Oh, not. Don't worry about the set intersection method. We we can leave him behind. Where forty was two cubed times five, right? Eight times five. Yeah. Who's got seventy-five? Mm -hmm. Yeah, three times twenty-five, so three times five squared. Oh, cool. So here's one way to kind of do this. Pick a bowl. So let's put two cubed times five down. What is he missing that that one's got? Another five. So another five and a three. three. There, there's the LCM. So another way to do it, the way I did it a second ago, which I kind of like, when it's fractions, it's kind of nice because they're sitting on the bottom and you sort of give um, I might show an example like that and see how trepidations you guys are about fractions. But uh, So this guy is definitely missing another five and a three, and this guy is missing all three twos. Uh, yeah. So if I do it the way I just did it, I do end up with this. And I love that idea about the ice cream bowls and trying to make them equal. And then whatever the hell else? 600? Nice. Nice. I don't know. Yes. So, real quick, just to show. Let's see if you guys, let's see. So, if I had to do three fortieths plus. 775, right? Oh shit. Oh shit. Just let it let it out. Get the anxiety. Okay. Um I would make this three over two cubed times five plus seven over uh you can do it Joe. Three times five squared. Then I would do this. This guy needs one more five. Right? And a three. This guy needs all the twos, and then he's good. Now, see? Now this will be 45 over 600 plus 7 times 8, 56 over 600, which would be 501 over 600. Yeah. Has anyone ever seen that kind of thing for LCD? Yes? Okay. It's the best way to do LCD in my opinion. Build it up very directly. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, oh. So, one big mistake, people. All right, let me ask you this. What's the LCM? Why, why is this? Really easy. What's the LCM of eight and nine? Can anyone see why that's really easy? We're, we're gonna we can get one. Get on we're side by side. Isn't eight two times two times two? Yeah. Isn't nine three times three? Yeah. Aren't they both missing each other? Mm -hmm. So wouldn't the answer just be seventy-two? Eight times nine. Mm -hmm. So what can I notice? 
about the numbers that would tell me I could just multiply them and be done with it is because they don't share anything. So they each need the entire other one. They are what we call relatively prime. Are either one of them prime numbers? Either one, they're both not prime, but they are relatively prime. That number means, that this, this phrase means relative to each other, they have nothing in common. The only thing they have in common is one. So I love that phrase, relatively prime. So this is the one time you can just multiply them together and be done with it. But then I get people that here's, what's the LCM of eight and 18? Are those relatively prime now? No. No, right? What do they have in common? What number do they have? What's their, what's their GCF? Two. Two, right? Two. Somebody help me out. Just what is eight times 18 divided by two? What is eight times 18 divided by the number they have in common? 72. 72, I love it. And the LCM of eight and 18, let's, let's do it. In fact, let's just do it this way. Um, we know 8 goes into 18, 36, right? The minute I get to 36, isn't 72 going to show up? 18, 36, 54, 72. Isn't 72 the answer then? All right. So again, this is a little side note, but it's a very interesting side note. Uh, let's try it here. Let's try this here. We know the answer is 600, right? Yeah. What number do they both have in common? Five. Isn't that the only number they have in common? Mm -hmm. Right? We, we, let me take this away. They only have five in common. So what is 40 times 75 divided by the number they have in common? 600. Freaking 600. Holy shit. <laughs> so a quick, a kind of a nifty little way to get the LCM is to multiply the damn numbers together, but then divide by what they have in common. Now, why does that make sense? Because if I multiply them together, am I not including five more often than it's supposed to be? Yes, so I have to divide one of them out. I have to divide by what I'm using more than I'm supposed to be using. If I do five times five squared, isn't there three fives in the answer now? Yeah. Aren't there supposed to be just, I erased it, aren't supposed to be just two fives in the answer? Yes. I really want that to make sense. It's kind of a beautiful thing. Okay, maybe, maybe. Maybe, okay. Um, before my notes ran out, I guess, I guess I'm done with that. Are you done, Jeff? Yeah, there's one little thing that's interesting. Um, uh, do you guys know how many prime numbers there are? They're still growing. True, but how many primes are there? Too many. Oh, too many. <laughs> e a little more specific. Certain number? Huh? It's a certain number? Yeah, maybe there's seven of them. But we know there's more than seven, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me tell you, there is an infinite number of primes. Been proven that there's an infinite number. That's why we keep trying to find a pattern. So we have computers that are crunching out the whatever stupid 87 zeros afterwards to figure out what the. But if we, if we found a pattern to the primes, then we wouldn't need that supercomputer chunking it out. We could just calculate whatever one we want. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So here's something interesting. Um, so Tell me, what's, what's the first few primes? You got two, three, five, five seven, seven, not eight, not nine, not 11, 10, 11. 11. Okay, blow up. So watch this. What is two times three times five? 30. 30. If you add one to that, I really want, all right, let me stop right here. Does two go into this number? Yes, it's in your face. Does three go into this number? Yes. Does five go into this number? Yes. In order for two, now no, listen, stay with me, this is so neat. If I want to, if I add two, doesn't two go into this whole thing now still? Because it's 
If two goes into this one and I add two to it, two will go into that number, right? Yeah. All right, if I add three, it's another multiple of three. Three is going to go into that new number, right? If I add five and another multiple of five, five is going to go. But if I add one, none of these go into that new number because it's not a multiple away. That's prime. So if I do... 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 times 11 times blah, 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 plus 1, I've made another prime. How much could I do that? I could do that for freaking ever. Yes? I could take every prime we know, multiply them, add 1, I got another prime. Yes? Yeah. Insane. So that's how we know there's an infinite number of primes. <sighs> yes? Are they even familiar? No, I'm sorry. That's just a little side. A little fun fact. Yeah. Yeah. I like the you know, like fun the way you define it. Right. I mean, it's, it's you know, uh, you kind of hear little bits about math. It's not in your sphere. Which I don't blame that. We kind of know primes, and some of you might have known there was something about trying to find the next prime, whatever. You might have, you may. Um, but that's it, it's kind of nice to see an idea behind. Something like why do we know there's an infinite number of primes? It's actually a very kind of straightforward reasoning process, right? I really want that to make sense. The whole idea of multiples, add one, and now it's not a multiple of any of these things. So it's going to have to be a prime. It's crazy. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, that's beautiful. That's uh, yeah, yeah. So stop again early. Holy shit, you guys are just spoiled. You guys are spoiled. <laughs> so let's do it. Oh, here, let me give you the practice test. Sure. Thank you. Alright. So I'll have the answer key for this next time. I'll have the quizzes graded. Tuesday is going to be a review day. Nothing new on Tuesday.